In this video, we're going to learn about sig figs or significant figures. And throughout all the chemistry and all your lab, we're going to be looking at sig figs. And you will be marked correct or not correct if you get sig figs right or not. So this is a very important topic to get down. And sig figs will tell you precision of the number you are reporting. If you're using a measurement, um, using instrument in the lab, how you report the numbers from that instrument will tell you your precision. And basically, the greater the number of sig figs you have, the more precise or more certain you are of your measurement. Now, we have certain rules to go along with sig figs. So let's say we have four numbers here. How many sig figs do we have? Well, the first rule is if you have any non-zero digit in a number you're looking at, all those non-zero digits have to be significant. So the blue numbers here I'm saying are significant. We don't know about these zeros yet. That's where rule number two comes in. If you have a zero between two non-zero digits, they are significant. So this zero is between four and eight, significant. These zeros are between non-zero numbers, so they are significant. Rule three, if we have zeros to the left of the first non-zero digit, they are not significant. That's why I have them in red. So these zeros, are all to the left of our first non-zero digit, so they are not significant. Now, how about zeros at the end of a number? Well, we have certain rules for these. If the zero is after a decimal point, all these zeros are always significant. If the zeros are before the decimal point, but after a non-zero number, then they are significant. Now, if you're working with a number that doesn't have a decimal point, you cannot assume these zeros are significant. So let's look at the number 12,000. No decimal point, so really you only have two significant numbers. Now, this is why we use scientific notation, so we can tell the readers what our significant digits are. Is it only two, or is it three, or is it four? Scientific notation will allow us to show this. Now, let's say we do have a decimal point. So now these zeros are to the left of the decimal point, but to the right of a non-zero number. So these zeros now become significant. I know, a lot of rules, but this is something you have to get down. And to help you with that, we have practice here. So what I want you to do is pause the video, try to get all, all the number of sig figs. So just tell me for each number, how many sig figs there are. And feel free to go back to earlier in the video to see those rules again. So pause it and come back when you have an answer. All right, let's look at these answers. So I think the most difficult ones are one, two, and three. Pretty simple, right? Number four, remember, these zeros are to the left of the first non-zero digit, so they are not significant. So this number only has four significant um, digits. 7, 8, 9. We don't have any decimal point, so we can only assume that these zeros are not significant. That's why the number is 2 every time. While 10 and 11, we do have a decimal point now, so that makes all these zeros significant. While 12, again, no decimal point, so only one number is significant. Now, what if you're dealing with exact numbers? And what is an exact number? An exact number has uh, no uncertainty to it. Um, for example, I climb 10 stairs. 
I could report that number as 10.0000, so on and so forth, because there's no uncertainty in stairs. Or certain conversion factors, like 107 meters to 1 meter, there is no uh, uncertainty to that number. 107 meters always equals 1 meter, so you can put as many zeros as you want. So if there's no uncertainty in the number, then you don't have to worry about sig figs. However, for you in chemistry, unless you're dealing with conversion factors, every number will have uncertainty with it, and you have to take care of sig figs. Okay, that's it for this video. See you in the next.